Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. Uh, normally I jump on Tuesday to do these videos, but uh, yesterday I was at the DMV for a good chunk. Well, I say a good chunk. I actually wasn't that bad. I was maybe there for an hour. Um, and then what did I do? I did something else with the rest of my day. Um, relatively busy. Anyway, um, it is Wednesday and we are here. My name is Brian, in case you've forgotten and you can't read or whatever. I think my name pops up somewhere. Anyway, oh my gosh. Um, exciting, exciting, exciting stuff going on. It is hopefully getting warmer, so we're going to be doing a lot more photos. I had an engagement session this last uh, sun Sunday. Went really well. Wonderful time. Um, and some other random news. I'm pretty excited. I just turned in an article. Um, I am being published on this uh, photography company website blog thing. And it's a, it's a pretty cool deal. I mean, it's a nationally known uh, organization, so it's not like it's just this tiny little thing. Um, it's focusing more on the photography side of things, so not really anything you guys would want to read, but I am pumped about it. I'm excited. It's, uh, it's always fun to uh, be published and get your work out there for people, for people to see it and to, to read some of the stuff that I've done. Um, there may, I'm trying to remember, I don't know what images they're going to pick. I sent them a bunch of images, but there, uh, there are a few people in this group who may actually be in that article. Some of your, some of your engagement photos or, uh, other photos may be in there. So you never know, you may be getting pu published as well. Anyway, okay, I have been talking for two minutes about random, random stuff. So what we're talking about today is picking your wedding party, your group of amigos that are going to be with you on the wedding day, but also helping you kind of before the wedding day and uh, doing a lot of things for you and with you. And I mean, this gets overlooked a lot, I think, as far as the importance of this. Um, but this is a this is a pretty important decision. I mean, first of all, like I said, they're going to kind of shape things as far as your wedding goes, but uh, also you can really tick off some people, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to tick off some uh, some relatives or some close friends, and I think a lot of people do struggle with making these decisions, so I am going to do my best to try and explain and try and go through this and help you figure that out, and so we begin. All right, jumping over to my... Jumping over to this, going to present, and all the way to the top, there it is. All right, here we go, here we go. Um, now, there is no perfect answer like anything in anything in the world, uh, so this will kind of depend on what, what you say to some of these questions on what works best for you. So the first thing, before you even really start considering uh, anything about your wedding party, what I would suggest is think about the atmosphere you're trying to create with your wedding. Um, because weddings are very, very different from one to the next. I mean, the atmosphere could be um, just crazy, excited, pumped up, dancing, drinking, partying, screaming, yelling at one wedding. And then the other wedding, it may be more just quiet, um, calm, relaxed, controlled, religious, I don't know, anything. Um, so think about what you want the whole wedding to be like, and that's going to kind of guide maybe uh, some things about your wedding party. So the first question I have on there is, is this going to be a big event or something smaller and simple? So uh, if it's, a, I mean, if it's something small and simple, you're probably not going to have like a ton of people in your wedding party. Um, I've had several of these smaller, simpler weddings where they don't even have a wedding party, where it's just the two of them up there and that's it. Um, some other ones where it's just one person on each side. So it, if it's something smaller, you're probably not going to be looking at a ton of people, which we'll talk about numbers in a minute. Um, if it's a big, big, big thing, then you're probably going to have a larger number. If you're, um, 
expecting a lot of people. Um, it's probably going to, you're probably going to have a, a few more people in your wedding party. Um, the next thing, and we talked about this a second ago, is it going to be uh, like a big party or is it going to be calm and relaxed? Um, and there's nothing wrong with either one of those. It's just what you want. Um, is it going to be goofy and fun or are you a really serious type person? And this is going to be a very serious wedding. Um, are you more with the go with the flow type person? Or are you someone who likes everything extremely detailed and planned out? So when you answer those questions, that's going to kind of give you a feel for what, what the wedding's going to be like. And from there, we can jump into this whole figuring out who is going to be at that wedding um, and up there with you because those people will kind of guide and control some of the way uh, your wedding happens. So how many people should you have? Uh, this number fluctuates so much. Like I said, I've had, I've had weddings with zero and I've had weddings with, I want to say the biggest is like 13 people on each side. I think, I think it was 13. So like 26 people in the wedding party and then the, the bride and the groom. So 28 people total. That's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. Um, so start off by just making a list. Okay. Don't even really like, don't think about the numbers. Don't really think about much else. Um, just write down all the important people that you would even consider. Okay. Even if you're pretty sure you're not going to use all of them, just write it down. And, uh, that's both of you. So you're both making this list. You make your list, he makes his list, whatever. And uh, just, again, put everyone you can think of that you would even remotely consider on that list. Um, and from there, you're going to basically eliminate people and remove people, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but the first thing to look at are the numbers. So do you have 50 people on your list and he has four? That could be a problem. That's going to be a lot harder <laughs> A lot harder to deal with if he has only four people that he would even cons likely tiny bit consider and you've got 50. Um, so I think that's a good starting point is seeing how close those numbers are. Now, if they're really close, then you're in a good position. Then it's not going to be that difficult for you. But again, if the guy, if one side has a tiny amount and the other side has a big amount, that's going to be difficult because you usually, you usually want those numbers to be even. Um, now, traditionally, you know, you have the guys on the guy side and the girls on the girl side, but I have seen in uh, some cases where things get flipped around and there's a girl on the guy side and uh, there's a guy on the girl side. And, and, and that again, is just, a, that'll be a decision you have to make. But um, the biggest thing is just looking at those numbers and seeing if they are anywhere in the same ballpark. Um, cause if they're not anywhere close, then you're going to have to like either add a bunch to one side or whittle down that other side. Um, okay. So as far as the numbers go, the bigger the wedding party, usually the more energetic the wedding. Um, some of the craziest weddings I've been at were the ones with the biggest, um, groups of, uh, group of wedding people, like in the wedding party. And I think that's just, I think that's just a common thing. I mean, the more people you have, the more energy, the more excitement is going to be in that group. I mean, it's hard to get really loud and crazy when there's only like two people. But when you have a lot of people, then there's a lot of interactions and a lot of jokes happening, a lot of smiling, um, laughing. It's easier to get people dancing. So uh, going back to what you're wanting for your wedding, if you're wanting that, if you're wanting that energy, excitement, uh, partying crazy, then you probably want to aim for more people in your wedding party. Um now, one thing to consider for yourself is uh, the more people in there, you're probably the more money you're going to be spending. Um, I don't, I didn't plan on, I don't plan on jumping into like the roles of what, uh, what they pay for and what you pay for. But in general, you're going to be paying for some stuff for them. So more people equals more money that you're going to have to spend. So that's just something to consider when you are picking that number of, uh, of people. Now I would say, and this isn't on the screen, but I would say the average wedding probably has, uh, about four people per side. And that's just me kind of guessing from my experience and what I've seen. Um, if you have, 
uh, I mean, if you're getting over like seven, eight, that's a pretty big group. If you're under, if you're under three, I mean like three and below, that's maybe two and below. It's like one or two. That's pretty small. Um, and again, I didn't plan on, I didn't plan on talking about this. I probably should have put this on here. Um, those numbers are going to affect some things about your wedding as well. So like as far as the photography goes, I mean, if you only have two people in your wedding party, there's not a whole lot of group shots you can do. There's not a whole lot you can do with your wedding party as far as photos. Um, if you have 13 people, then that also can be kind of limiting. I mean, that's a really big group to try and 26 people. That's a lot of people to move around and put in places and try and do photos with. And that's going to take more time. Um, so, I mean, in general, I would say four to six is probably the sweet spot for most people as far as how many people um, you would put in there. But again, think about the things you're wanting to do and consider that as well. All right. Um, this is also important. Uh, the amount of space you have, because if you have 13 people, they take up a lot of space. If you have one person, then they don't take up much space. So uh, thinking about the room where you're getting ready. Is it big? Is it going to be able to fit 13 people? Um, most wedding venues can't fit 13 people in a dressing room. It's just not going to happen, at least not comfor comfortably. Um, I mean, you'll be on top of each other. Someone's going to have to go use a different bathroom. It's going to be crowded. Um, same thing with the altar. I mean, I've had the, the groups that are like really big wedding parties. They cover like the entire altar, um, which makes it hard to see things and it just is crowded again. So that's some stuff to think about. Same thing with like the table at the reception. I mean, if you're wanting them all to sit with you and you have 26 people, how are you going to fit them all into that spot? Same thing if you're like doing a limo or some kind of party bus, do you have the space to fit that many people? Um, so keep when you're, when you're figuring out the numbers, keep all those things in mind. I mean, what you're going for as far as the atmosphere, how much money you're wanting to spend, um, how it's going to affect your affect your photos, and then also just do you have the space for all these people or not? All right, once you kind of get a general idea um, of your number, then you're going to go back to that list and try and uh, eliminate and get it down close to what you were thinking. Um, so... Going back to the atmosphere again, because again, your wedding party is going to affect your atmosphere. I've had some wedding parties that were wonderful, awesome, and then some that were just, you know, and again, not a bad bad thing, but just very mellow and no personality. Um, so think about the atmosphere you are wanting. Um, if you want a certain atmosphere, you're going to pick certain people probably to fit into that. Um so if you're wanting that party atmosphere, what type of person on that list is going to contribute to that? What type of person is going to take away from that? Um, so if you're wanting a really calm wedding, you don't pick the crazy person. So uh, go through and start kind of eliminating, okay, I don't think this person is really going to fit very well with what I'm trying to create. Um or this person is going to make this a exactly what I wanted. And it'll be a wonderful, wonderful time because they are there. And uh, some other things just to consider as far as that goes. Are there any people on that list that do not get along that just hate each other and cannot be in the same room? Um, just the drama people. Um, so if there are two people that can't just get along, you either get rid of one of them or get rid of both of them. I don't know. Um some other things to consider, did any of these people pick you for their wedding? I would think I would think in general if someone if someone picked you to be like their best man in their wedding, you better pick them to at least be in your wedding party. Um so if if you were in their wedding, I think it's pretty normal to make sure that they are in your wedding as well. Um at least, uh, at least consider it. And who would be really upset if you didn't pick them? Um, like your sister, if you're, <laughs> if you don't pick your sister to be in your wedding party, she's probably going to be pretty upset. And, uh, there are just those friends that get more emotional and are more, uh, 
they care more about these things. So that's something to consider as well. So if you are having to num get rid of some of the numbers, um, I mean, think about that. You don't want to lose your friend over this or relative. So if there's one person who just doesn't really care if they're in it and then someone that's going to freak out, you might pick the person that's going to freak out to keep because um, the other person's not going to care. Um, would it be a financial burden on any of them? So if you're in a wedding party, you usually have to either buy a dress or get a tux. Um, you usually have to go on a, uh, you know, go off to do a party for the, uh, the bride or the groom, and that's going to cost money. So if there's anyone that's just like really struggling financially, you wouldn't want to, you might not pick them because you don't want to put that burden on them. Um, because they're going to feel obligated to do these things and it may just, it may just be hard for them to pay for it. So that may be something that you consider when you're eliminating people, if it's just too much money and they can't handle it, if they just got out of uh, college and they have three kids and, um, they just lost their job, whatever. So consider that as well. And if you are really struggling, are there some of them that you could put in other positions, other jobs? Like, could they be ushers? Could they be attendants? Could they have just some made up title? I don't know. Um, but if you can find something for them to do, I think most people are going to be happy. Uh, they just, the really close people don't like being eliminated completely. So that's just something, you know, you have to like come up with some way to do it. Can they could, they could hand out, uh, hand out stuff to people as they show up for the wedding ceremony for the ceremony. I don't know. There's lots of different ways to do that. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in this list of things I was thinking about that I didn't mention yet. Okay. So again, this isn't on the slide, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. Um, the biggest thing I would say is try to be, try to be as honest with people as possible. Um, try to be upfront about it you know, just kind of tell them what the situation is and tell them what's happening. But then also uh, be considerate of how they feel. I mean, put yourself in their shoes. If your best friend didn't want you to be in their wedding, how would that make you feel? Or if your sister or whatever, um, if you if you were left out while all the other friends were, were picked, um, so just you kind of keep that in mind as well. But again, honesty, I think, is the best way to go about it. If you're just clear and say, you know, this is what this is what it is. We only have room for four people. I've got four sisters, so I'm just not picking anyone else um, to be in it. But you can you can help cut the cake or something. And and I think most people, if they're really your friend and they're really mature about it, are going to be understanding and they're not going to be you know, they're not going to freak out. But I have had situations where people are just drama. And again, you probably don't want those people there anyway. So, I mean, if they're going to be super immature about it and still be rude and upset after you explained everything and after you were really, uh, really upfront, then that's just their problem and they're just going to have to deal with it. I have had that happen where um, the poor bride was upset because some girl was being kind of rude about that. But again, it's your wedding. You're going to be the one making the final decision. And don't let other people boss you around and force you into doing things you don't want to do. Um, all right. So I have no idea if anyone has made any comments or anything. I All I can see is myself. Let's, I don't know if I can even pull that up or not. Let's see if I can go back just to staring at myself for a second. There I am. Okay, let's see if anyone, I don't think anyone has said anything. Um, so guys, I know I know that's difficult. Um, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to do. But really, honestly, the wedding party affects so much um, of the whole process. I mean, like I said, you're uh, maid of honor may be planning your bachelorette party. She may be helping you plan things for the whole wedding day. She may be coming with you to bridal fairs to help you pick your vendors. Um, so all these people, it's not like a, a real simple choice that's not going to have uh, consequences. 
Um, it is important to pick the ones that you think are going to help you the best and the ones that are the most important to you and the ones you care about. So uh, don't don't think of it as just like, eh, I'm just going to randomly pick people. Really think about that and make a good decision. All right. I can't think of anything else to say. Um, so hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Again, as always, if you have questions, if you have thoughts, comments, um, feel free to comment on this or message me below. Um, or I mean, message me personally or send me an email or whatever. I'm here to help you guys and I want you to have an amazing wedding. Oh, and I can only do that if you ask for help. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday. It is March now. And uh, I hope the weather is going to get warmer for you. And I hope everything is going super for your wedding. See you guys.